Hello, welcome to Agape Hesed. Agape is the unconditional love of God. And Hesed is the consistent, steadfast, loyal love of God. So welcome to Agape Hesed. You know, one of my favorite movies many, many years ago was Titanic. And I remember <laughs> we were like some guys who were watching it. Uh, for the first time and I was the only guy who cried at the end when Jack dies <laughs> so uh, but I, I was very intrigued by that story and I remember reading about it and for this video I read it again something about it and it was actually called as the ship that would never sink that's how they the builders had claimed about that ship the unsinkable ship and um, and actually it was the product of around 40 years of shipbuilding, you know, they had tested the ships on the North Atlantic. And after 40 years, that's when the project started about Titanic. And they had, in fact, in the New York Post article, I just read it on, on the Internet. Uh, in the New York Post article, it, they wrote that Titanic was built beyond those days safety requirements. So they really did a great job with that. So it was not like arrogance when they claimed that this is the ship that would not sink. But it was more of probably like presumption, you know, like, ah, it'd be okay. And it kind of reminded me of, uh, you know, many things in our lives. You know, even though we go through different crises and stuff, um, we have this, you know, ah, it'd be okay. Ah, it's not a, it'd be okay. It's not going to be a big problem. Um, in Psalms 121, one of my favorite Psalms is Psalms 121. It says where the psalmist, he writes, he says, I look up to the hills, to the mountains. Where does my help come from? And it's fascinating for me, that whole statement, because um, I think many times in our lives, when we go through a certain crisis or situations, we have these mountains in our lives, which we look up to. You know, it could be, I don't know, a famous politician, somebody we'd really trust, or a political party, or, 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 or some friends. On a personal level, it can be friends. It can be our family members, somebody in the family. It could be um, teachers or, or colleagues in the office or your company where you work. And it's a very old company, and so there's a certain stability uh, that the company um, exudes, you know, in its in the way the history and everything, because mountains, in a way, symbolize constancy, stability, and um, you know, I think in the ancient cultures, some of the ancient cultures, I, I happen to read it that uh, they even called mountains as the center of the world, because there was something about these mountains where it, for for people, we just go, wow, you know, it's strong unshakable and there's this this feeling of awe and grandeur and it's huge and you it takes a lot you know from us to really climb and you know um so mountains we have these mountains in our lives you know and many times i remember in my past life you know any situation if i would go through some crisis or some some tough situation i would I had these mountains in my life. I remember one of my biggest mountains, you know, mountains was my father. He was a fantastic man and he loved God and he had this intimacy with God, which was like amazing. You know, he would pray and, you know, there was instant answers. So I remember he was one of my biggest mountains. Anything happened, I just knew that father is there. My dad will pray and it'll be okay. Uh, but my world... Uh, Shat I mean crumbled they actually shattered. My heart was shattered to I don't know a million pieces when my father left this world. And um I think I mentioned in the first video that even today I miss him uh after so many years. Um then the second mountain for me was my home country. <laughs> You know, I knew what I, I remember speaking. Uh, I would share with people those days because many Indian people would love to. They wanted to go to the U.S. or Canada or Germany. And I remember I was among those few <laughs> who would say, no matter what happens, I'm going to stay in India. 
and this is my country and this is where I'm going to live and and things like that. But then, you know, life changed. I got married and, you know, left India and it's almost now, I think it's close to 18, 19 years now. So that was, and my plans changed. It was not in my plans, you know, it was just, we were supposed to just come visit and go back. But, you know, God has a way of changing plans. And uh, I remember my world collapsed when I realized, oops, I'm not going back. And it took me almost two years to get used to that, the truth that I'm not going back. And I was, remember I was used, I battled depression and suicidal thoughts and hopelessness, just that, that, whoa, this world, my mountain has collapsed, you know. There are, there's no way I'm going back. There was another mountain was my child, my first child, you know. And when my first child went to be with the Lord, um, I remember my world collapsed also. So in a way, we have all these mountains or something that is so precious or gives us a sense of security, by the way. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, wow, or something, but just you feel secure or safe or attached to and, um, um, you know, for some of us, it's those movies that we watch. You know, we know that even though you have a hard day, I'm going to watch a movie or, or that alcoholic drink or that, that Friday evening meeting with your friends. And, you know, so, so the psalmist says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? And then he realizes that my help, his help is not coming from these mountains. And then he understands, my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And that was something that liberated him from this uh, false sense of security. And I think even with this whole COVID situation and with all that's happening around the world, many of these mountains are crumbling. You know, um, it can be this political party, or it could be the strong economy. I mean, for me, sometimes when I read the news, here and there when I read the news and I just read what's happening in the U.S., I'm just stunned, actually stunned, at the at the way the whole nation is unraveling, you know, just unraveling, just here and there. It's like it's so clear that that nation is divided and it's just a question of time before this nation, uh, you know, just gradually spirals down you know and you can see at the other on the other side you know china is rising um so but again when you study history you can see empires rise and empires uh, go down you know um you see in hollywood also superstars and suddenly their whole careers collapse you know like johnny depp for example one of my favorite actors johnny depp with all the court cases you know or, or robin williams by the way the comedian and who committed suicide um, and um, so we have these certain mountains whom we think that they are constant, but the, we can look as we look around and we watch the news or read the news, we can see it's so clear that many of these things are crumbling down. And it can even be in churches, for example, it can be somebody, great man or a great woman, and suddenly they're dead, they're gone, or they've moved or some they've left the faith. I remember one of my favorite worship leader. I don't want to name him. He recently came up with uh, some months back, actually. He said that he has his doubts and he's, you know, going away and things like that. And I remember reading and I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, because I loved singing his songs here and there. I used to watch uh, his videos and I still do because uh, even though he is gone, it doesn't mean those songs were, you know, bad and things. Uh, and I think... It actually, that point where we see our mountains crumble or our mountains, when they are unable to give us that sense of security, it, is a, it, it really it, it affects us massively. And that state of shock and that feeling of shock and surprise and insecurity and that, whoa, and we are so addicted to our routine and that constancy is so important for many people that that you know what is going to happen next. You have planned your week, your month. Uh, some of us are so addicted to it. It's like a mountain in our lives, you know, 
the plans you have for today, the week, the next week, the, the career plans. And you know, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to study this. And five years later, I'm going to go here and study this. And then I'm going to find a job there. Or my uncle is in that country. Or my brother is in that nation. And he's in that company. And he'll uh, arrange the job for me and all that. And suddenly, our mountains collapse. And so I sensed in my heart this time to speak about what, are, what is the mountain in your life? Which mountain are you looking up to? And in, in the book of Jeremiah, God clearly says, you know, he says, Cursed is the man who trusts in man, who finds his strength in the flesh. You know, and there is already a curse for that. You know, but then the scripture says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. You know, in Psalms 46, by the way, one of my favorite Psalms where where the psalmist, once he understands this, he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. And this was fascinating. He is present, not just he was my help or he will be my help, but he says he is a present help right now, wherever you are, he is there. Present help. And then it's interesting what the, what the psalmist writes there. He says, God, uh, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. And then he says, therefore, and it's very, let me just read it. It's, uh, I've opened it here. And he says, therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. And it's interesting that he specifically writes there, mountains fall into the heart of the sea and though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with the surging we will not fear and in verse 5 he says God is within her he talks about the city of God uh, which in New Testament times you know when with Christ we understand that when Jesus comes into our hearts we are become his temple we are like the city of God you know uh, his city, he lives in us. And he says, he, this is where the Most High dwells in verse 4. And he says, God is within her. She will not fall. So simple. And it's a, God will help her at the break of day. You know, and it's so interesting and so reassuring for us because mountains are not constant, though they give us the image of constancy and stability you know, and and that no matter what happens, the economy will not collapse. The European Union will be there or America will be there. America, <laughs> the way they say it, and, you know, or this politician will be there all the time. And, you know, uh, this job will be there, you know. But the reality is that all these things will move, will pass away. And God wants to remind us this day. And this is what I sensed, you know, as I was sharing about this. Especially when uh, when we read the news and things, yeah, for those sport sports lovers, you know, uh, we were watching this uh, Barcelona Bayern, Bayern Munich and Barcelona football game for European Champions League, and it we were shocked, shocked, shocked how Bayern hammered Barcelona eight two, and I remember after they came by son, we were all just stunned. Because he's a Barcelona fan, and um, and and in the BBC they were writing how this legendary club is crumbling, and I kind of noticed throughout the news that many of these big names, let it be in sports or technology or business, it's crazy how many companies and things are, are collapsing, and and God who saw this, who knows this, is encouraging us through the word. He says, trust in me. I am a present help, ever present, ever present, never gives up on us. Now, the whole thing comes from relationship. And I love what uh, in John chapter 1, verse 12, it says that all those who received him, and I love this, where God gives us that possibility. The Lord is inviting us. He, you know, and the Bible says to all those who received him, he gave them the power the right to be called the children of God. Amazing. Not servants of God, but children of God. And that's where, again and again and again, I keep repeating that Christianity is not about a religion. It is actually a first and foremost, and I would say always, a 
personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's all about relationship because it's, it's in this relationship we find our security, not in the mountains because with mountains we cannot have a relationship. You don't have a relationship with the economy. You don't have a relationship with, with, uh, with the politician or the political party or with that, I don't know, that superstar. We cannot have a relation. We know, we, we go, wow, but we cannot have a relationship. And by the way, hmm, I think that's probably one of the reasons why we look to the mountains because um, we don't have that intimacy with that, those things. So in a way, we are, we kind of, uh, we kind of protect ourselves in a way. We are safe. We don't allow too much of vulnerability. And, uh, and then we just are consumers, you know. And this probably is one of the reasons why we don't want to have, many of us don't want to have a relationship with God. Hmm, interesting. I, I didn't ever thought, I would never planned this. That we, we don't want to have a relationship with God. It's simply because it makes us vulnerable, because it's a relationship. Hmm. Yeah, I think I need to think about this probably in another video and talk about it. So what is the mountain you're looking up to? You know, your mountain will collapse. Every mountain will collapse. It's just a question of time. And the word of God encourages us. Don't look to the mountain. Look to the God who is above the mountain, greater than the mountain. Because one day the mountains will shake. The earth will shake and the mountains will be thrown into the sea and the waters will rage and foam. But if God is within you, you will not fall. We will not fall. And it's interesting in Psalms 121, the same Psalm where it says, where the psalmist says that I lift up my eyes to the hills from where comes my help. He, it's interesting where he, in the, towards, it's an interesting Psalm. Please take time to read it. I don't want to study it completely. I don't want to analyze it. But there's an interesting statement that says, um, and the Lord shall, uh, let me see where it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. And I remember for a long time, I was wondering, man, sun makes sense. Okay, the sun, it's hot and, you know, uh, it won't harm me. Okay, it makes sense. But the moon? Kapets. Uh, that's Latvian for why. Kapets, why should the moon? Why? How come the moon harms me? And then only later as I grow old, as I grew older and, you know, in Latvia, we have, because of long, dark nights, you know, many times it's, I love watching the moon, moon, moon. <laughs> And uh, and I've heard so many stories from people here where they say, you know, full moon, when they, when it's full moon, people act crazy. And I kind of believed it for something, but it would be, if I can't sleep, I'll be like, I look out the window, I see the full moon and I go, no, yeah, it's full moon. That's why I can't sleep. Of course, duh, you know. But as I understood the scriptures and as I began to grow in faith and trusting the word and really understanding the word, I realized, wow. What I believe controls me. So if I believe that this mountain is huge and this will save me or protect me, then it affects my life. It controls my life. So if I say, wow, the full moon, whoa, yeah, so it means I can't sleep today or I'm going to do crazy stuff or somebody's going to do crazy stuff. No, what we believe controls us. And I realize now the Bible says, the word of God is very clear. God will not let the moon harm you. Because he's with you, he watches over you. He will not allow the sun to harm you by day nor the moon by night. And that was such an eye opener. And I was like, yeah, hmm, the moon cannot harm me. And I remember after, after that, I stopped allowing that thought. And I was like, no, even if it's full moon, I'm going to sleep peacefully. <laughs> and I do. And in fact, because in another scripture, it says, uh, uh, whether uh, the psalmist, I think it's the psalmist, he says, the Lord gives good sleep to his beloved. And the Bible is very clear that we are his beloved children in Christ. When we give our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, we are beloved. We are his children. And we are his beloved. And we get good sleep. And so it's very powerful when you think about it. It's simple truth, you know, but it's powerful. And the main thing I love is the relationship. We have a relationship with the living God, not just a philosophy, not just some bureaucratic 
organization or a strong uh, economy or something which is so impersonal there's no relationship we just wow and things but but with god it's relationship and so that is my encouragement to you all you know that it be the titanic made with so much care and technology and you know and especially i think in the, they say about the titanic that it was built in a time where people's faith in technology was peaking and when that whole thing collapsed after all that they really had to redo the whole concept of shipbuilding and i think even today it's so clear that man has not conquered nature you know here and there are some things but overall we haven't conquered nature and some even some scientists they predict that that humanity is going to uh humanity is going to cease to exist ah uh, that's another discussion or thought to think about the bible is very clear what's going to happen in the future and that's an interesting thing to think about by the way um i you know in these videos i cannot i don't address a lot of issues it's just short short videos i would encourage you to go to gotquestions.org i haven't been through that whole website but they they give a christian biblical perspective and answers to many life's questions and i encourage you uh, if you're a seeker to go to gotquestions.org and it's not my it's not my website it's so website many years ago somebody started it in the us and it's but i find that website quite quite good uh, as much as i've read and gone through it and there's a lot of good answers to questions so i encourage you to go and check the website and i'm sure that uh, you will find amazing answers answers that will help you through the word of god to the questions of your heart so i encourage you to seek the lord and give your heart even take this time while you're watching and say like, god i'm so sorry i've just come to him you know in your own words talk to him and say lord help me to trust you i'm so sorry that i've trusted in this mountains and mountain of this or i don't know economy or my career or my skill my own skills and talents or my friends or my parents but lord i can see that you know none of these things are stable and long lasting help me to trust you and it start with that simple prayer and then um, as you as you uh, keep in touch and and as you keep watching these videos as we upload i'm sure that you will learn a lot more um stay in touch uh thank you for taking the time to watch these videos and to come in thank you for coming back to agape hesed and uh there's some more information towards the end uh please feel welcome to subscribe to this channel please do feel welcome to share it with others um as i keep saying that i'm on a journey i don't have all the answers i'm learning with other brothers and sisters who are walking this road and uh we're on a journey god has all the answers and it's in his word um so we can study this together so i encourage you to to go to god's word and you can f- feel free to email or to contact me and um and i'm sure in the course of the journey we I'm sure we will find a way uh how to work together. So thank you for taking this time to watch and thank you for subscribing and watching and please do feel welcome to share, feel welcome not to share too. I just hope that it helped you. This video helped you in some way to 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 really uh, help you see things in a different perspective. Don't be in awe of the mountains because these mountains will collapse. look to the god who is above the mountains who created the heavens and the earth and he wants to be our father and uh, and the invitation is there come to me all who are weary if you're tired and weary of life come to me the words of jesus come to me and i will give you rest you know it's a guarantee i will he doesn't say i i might let me think about it let me see if you are really serious no i will give you rest you know to all those who came to him he gave them the right to be the children of god to come to him is to receive his of his salvation and to believe in him so if you can take time to check out godquestions.org and there are many questions that are answered there well thank you remember god's agape hesed love is for you constant unconditional love of god May God bless you and I hope to see you soon.